We all know that the motors in our printers can be damn noisy and we do everything in our power to make them as quiet as possible. But what if you could use this noise to your advantage? Well, the very people that brought us active noise cancelling for the motors in our printers, Bamboo Labs, is now hosting a website that allows you to not just convert but also create music, which can then be played by the motors in your printers. <laughs> Not only can this be a fun party trick, there is also practical purpose behind this. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you through how you can do this and what you can do with it. So let's have a look. Musical Motors is nothing new. You may have even seen the Floppatron here on YouTube, where entire orchestral scores were played out with nothing but a bunch of floppy disk drives and hard drives. Even with 3D printers, it has been previously possible to play back music using the motors of the printers, though this was largely reliant on modified firmware. With less open source printers, such as those from Bamboo Labs, that hasn't been an option. But now, with this MIDI to G code generator hosted by Bamboo Labs, it means that even people with something like an A1 or an A1 Mini can now control the sound their motors make. It's all centered around the website midi2gcode.bamboolab.com, which I'll pop a link to in the description below which allows you to convert MIDI files to G-code files, which then instruct the printer how to use its motors to play back the music. Not only does it allow you to convert existing MIDI tracks to printer playable G-code with some caveats that I'll talk about later, but if you are a Mozart maker waiting for your time to shine, you can also use it to make your own music from scratch. So first of all, go to midi to gcodebamboolabcom and hit launch. This is your user interface. So this big section here is your timeline. The area from left to right represents the time passed, and each row, each section is relevant to a key of the instrument you've got selected. So if I wanted to apply this note here, for example, I can click on the timeline and it is then applied that note at that point in time. So you can click different notes at different points in time and it will then play those in sequence. If you hit the play button or the space bar on your keyboard, it will then play back. You can then go back or you can select a different time from the timeline at the top here. So let's go back for now. Once you've applied a note, you can then click and drag it to move it to a different time, or you could even move it up or down so it is applying a different note at that point. So that's the core of how you would put together the notes of a track you are trying to create. Let's have a quick listen to what we've got here. Far from a masterpiece, but it should be good enough for this video. Now down at the bottom here, you have a number of tabs. The first one is velocity, and this is how hard the chords are being struck at this point. The second is pitch blend, and if we draw along the timeline, you will then see that this is going to affect the pitch of playback at that point in the timeline. So I'll hit Ctrl Z to return that to zero, and we'll move on to the next tab, which is volume. This works in the exact same way. It allows you to draw across the timeline to affect the song at different points in your track, and it will affect, just as the name suggests, the volume of the track at those different points. I'll control Z again and move on to the next one, which is pan pot. This will allow you to pan the music between the left and the right speakers if you're playing back on a stereo device. Again, you can draw along the timeline and it will affect which speaker is being prioritized along the track. Now you'll obviously only notice the difference there if you're using a stereo device, but if you're using headphones it should be more obvious. The next tab is expression. This is effectively the same as volume, it will affect the volume of the track at the point that you're applying it. So if I was to draw a line along here and then hit play, you'll have heard it got quieter and trailed off. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between expression and volume, but expression is a common feature in MIDI. Hold pedal is relevant to holding down a pedal on a piano, and it affects the sustain of the sound. The higher you set it here, the longer the note will be held for. The final tab here is modulation. This allows you to distort the sound, again at different points across the timeline by drawing a line here. Beyond the modulation tab is a three button menu button. In here, you'll see there is a huge list of additional settings which you can then use to affect your track. If you select one and then click the Add button, it will add it to your list of accessible tabs in the main menu. 
if you would select one that is accessible and click remove, it would remove it so you can then control your general user interface and what settings you're using more commonly. By default, you have up here the pen tool selected, which is the one that allows you to click and create new notes or select and drag them. The other option is the marquee tool, which allows you to draw a selection box and select multiple notes at the same time. You can then move them around by clicking and dragging, copy and paste them by Ctrl C, Ctrl V or Command C, Command V if you're on a Mac, or you can just delete them entirely using the delete key on your keyboard. I'll just press Ctrl Z to undo that for now. Now if I go back to the pen tool and I add a note here, you'll see that if I click and drag this, it snaps to the shape of the grid. I can only put it in a couple of different types of positions. If I turn this button off though, I can then drag this to much more specific locations, so I can be much more controlled over where my notes appear. This next box controls the length of a note that you're applying, so I'll apply a standard note there. If I was to change this number to 128, and I click here, you can see that I have placed a much shorter note. You reduce this down to let's say 42, and then I've created a much longer note. You can also use the triplet and dotted functions to also control the length and style of note that you're applying. And the last button here is just the auto scroll button, which ensures that the timeline automatically scrolls with the timeline bar. Now all of this assumed that we're using a piano as our instrument, but if we go up and click acoustic grand piano, not only do we get a list of different types of pianos, we get a list of different types of instruments entirely. Pianos, guitars, bass, reeds, drums, You've even got sound effects where you can apply sounds such as helicopters or telephones or birds tweeting. Of course, if you're planning on making a musical number one, a single instrument may not cut it, but that's why we have tracks. In tracks, you can create multiple tracks. Each one can have a different instrument assigned to it, and then you can have them all play back at the same time. So for our second track here, let's select a different instrument. Let's go down to, oh, let's, let's add a drum. We'll go down to percussion and we'll select um, a synth drum and then click OK. And you can now see that with our track two, our drum selected, as I add notes, it's adding drum beats rather than piano keys. Each track has a variety of controls which affect what you're listening to. So let's put this timeline to the beginning and have a quick listen to both our instruments together. If we then go up and we click on this headphone button, this is the isolate button. If any track has the isolate button activated, only tracks with the isolate button turned on will be played back when you're playing back the track. It's sort of like the opposite of a mute. If you isolate a track, it mutes everything else that isn't isolated as well. The mute button, on the other hand, just mutes or turns off the track that you've applied it to. Okay, so let's get that track unmuted. If you then select the channel, it allows you to apply a name and select a channel for the track. We won't worry about channels for now, but you can apply a name so you can easily identify what is on that track. We'll go ahead and give these very creative names, piano and drum. Now this next setting is essential for the printer. For each track, you can apply chord, bass or main theme. This might not seem that intuitive, but effectively each of these three is directly relevant to one of the motors on your printer. So whichever you apply it to here, that is the motor that is gonna play back this track. You can apply a single track to multiple motors. So if you had one of your tracks that you wanted to be emphasized more, you could apply it to more than one motor. However, you can't apply multiple tracks to a single motor. Because the motor can only make one noise at a time, it can't then play back multiple tracks simultaneously. And this leads me to one of our biggest limitations here. Because we only have three motors and each motor can only make one noise at a time, it means that not only are we limited to a maximum of three tracks, but each track can only have one note being played at any one time. So it's important to make sure you don't have multiple simultaneous notes on the same track. So that's a general overview of the piano roll tab, which is effectively your timeline tab where you can draw out your notes. The next tab, Arrange, is a great place to go once you have created your notes that allows you to get a bigger overview of your entire timeline. You can still select, move, copy and paste and delete different sections of your track, so this is a good way to make quick edits to different tracks or entire sections of your tune, and it's something we'll use a bit more in a little bit. The final tab is the Tempo tab, and like some of the other settings, you can draw across the timeline, and this will affect the tempo across the timeline of your tune. 
although it's not quite making my ears bleed yet, this is very far from a masterpiece. So for the sake of the rest of this tutorial, I'm just going to refresh this page, which will then delete everything we've done so far. If, like me, you're not exactly a musical maestro, you may not want to be creating your music to play back on your printer. Luckily, this system allows you to convert existing MIDI tracks, so all you need to do is go and download something that you like. There are tons of websites out there with huge free libraries of MIDI tracks that you can just download and use with this system. Here I'm using midis101.com. I'll give a search for House of the Rising Sun, which you can see I've done before, and I'll select one of these tracks. You can play back and have a listen to what it sounds like by clicking on the play button here. So we'll have a listen to what this sounds like. That sounds like it's going to be more than good enough for me, so I'll download the MIDI file. And with that downloaded, we'll go back to our Bamboo Labs website, and we'll go to File at the top left here, and click Open. And we'll then select our downloaded MIDI file. Now you can see that we have got all of these tracks added to the left-hand side, and if I zoom out using the button on the right-hand side, you'll be able to see all of the notes in the timeline here. Now what can be useful when you've got a lot of complicated tracks, is go over to your track on the left-hand menu, right click and go to change track color. You can then select one of these colors here and it's going to highlight the items of that track on the timeline in that color. This can make it much easier to see specific tracks within your timeline and what parts interact with each other. Because I forgot to go through this with you when I was recording the main part of this tutorial, these colors won't remain persistent for the rest of this video. Now in an ideal world, we would just export this entire song as G-code ready for the printer to play back. But because we're limited to just three motors and three simultaneous tracks, we need to go through and filter it out so we only have three tracks left, ensuring that there's no simultaneous notes on each of those tracks. So what we want to do is find the three tracks which when isolated still sound like this song. Let's jump to the Arrange tab to have a listen to the track and figure out which part we want to use. Obviously too early in the intro here and we're not getting what we need. Let's have a look a little later on. Okay, there's definitely more going on in this section and you can see the notes coming up on the timeline at the points they're being played. So as you're listening to it, you're able to figure out which parts you would like to keep for your printer to play. So you can see down here, this looks like it's the percussion, part of the melody up here. And then there's this key line here, which has started in the intro. So now let's look at these tracks and see if we can isolate them over in the Piano Roll tab. So in the Arrange tab, it looked like track 10 is one of the tracks we may want to keep, so let's isolate it and have a listen. Okay, that sounds pretty promising, so let's unisolate that and have a listen to track 5 for now, as this was now the one that looked like it could be useful. That also sounds good, and now let's have a look at track 2. Great, that sounds good to me. Let's have a quick listen to 4, because I couldn't remember if this was also a good one to look at. <laughs> well, it looks like that's all that 4 was, so we won't be using that. Let's now isolate tracks 2, 5, and 10, and listen to them together to see if that's going to be our full song. Switching back to arrange mode, we can easily see where each of the notes from each of these tracks is going to play out. Okay, let's have a listen to what this sounds like. Great, that sounds good to me. So what we want to do is now get rid of the tracks that we're not going to use. I found it can behave a bit funny when you're deleting them, renaming different tracks, different things, or applying settings of one track to another. So what I would suggest is look at the applied instruments for each of the tracks you want to use. We want to use the first and second guitar tracks and the last drum track. So remember those and then just go through and delete everything you don't need. With everything deleted, let's have a listen to make sure that we've deleted the right ones and it's still sounding good. Well, that sounds good to me, but I don't want the entire song, so I now need to look at what part of the song I want to trim out, and that can be easier in the Arrange tab. So go through your track and find the beginning and ending points of the area you want to keep. Delete a small section of all of the tracks just before and just after the area you want to keep, and then you can zoom out and delete everything else very easily. Then select just the area with the music that you are keeping, 
and reposition this by just dragging it to the beginning of the timeline. Now you have the important step of applying each of your final tracks to your three motors so your printer can play it. Whilst these selections do actually specify a specific motor, it doesn't matter which you select as long as they are applied to one of the three motors. Well, I'm happy with that, so now we want to go File and Save. This Save button will export a MIDI file, not our GCO file, but it's important to export the MIDI file because this is what allows you to edit the project again in the future. The G code file can't be imported back into this and you'd effectively lose the ability to make any changes in the future. Once you've exported your MIDI file just as a backup, go to File and then Save as G code. Now connect your printer's SD card to your computer and drag over your G code file which you've just exported. This can just go in the root folder of the SD card as if it was a normal G code file that you were going to print. Pop the card back in your printer and power it on. If you're using a Bamboo Lab A1 or A1 Mini, you probably turned off the annoying startup sound soon after you bought it. But this feature does need to be turned on now, so go to Settings, go onto the second page of the Settings, Print Options, and then turn on Sounds. You can then go back to the main menu of the printer, and then go on to Print Files and select the G code that you have just added to the card. Turn off Bed Leveling and Dynamic Flow because it's not going to be doing any printing, and hit Print. <laughs> Well that's a great party trick, you've made your printer sing, but what's the point in it? Well, when you've got a track you're happy with, you can have that playback at key moments during a print. So you could have it playback every time you start your printer up, you could have it playback every time it changes layer, but key for me is having it play back at the end of a print. This means you could have your favorite tune notify you that a print is finished and ready to collect. So let's have a look at how you can do this. In Bamboo Studio, I'm just gonna throw together a really quick, simple primitive that's gonna print really quick just to show you how you can integrate these songs with your prints. Right, we've got a nice small print there now. If you go up to the edit button next to your selected printer in printer settings and go to the machine G code tab, you'll see a range of boxes which allow you to apply G-code which will then be run at specific points during a print. You can add G-code that will run when the machine starts up, when a print finishes, when it changes layer, changes filament. You can even use this section to control how time lapses are made by changing the G-code for time lapses. For us, however, we want to look down, let's go through machine end G-code, so this would be the end of a print. If we scroll down through the existing end G-code in there, you're eventually going to find this title, Printer Finished Sound. So with sound turned off on your printer, this won't be happening, but this is effectively a sound made by your motors when a printer has finished a print. So all we need to do is replace this with the G-code that we have just created. So if you go to your G-code file, right-click it, and open it with Notepad or any other text editor, this is effectively your song that you have created. So what you want to do is select all of this by highlighting it all or pressing Control A or Command A, then copying it with Control C or Command C, then jump back into Bamboo and scroll down and find that area of printer finish sound again. You want to select everything in between these two titles. There's a title at the beginning and end of this text. So select all of that and then press Delete or just go ahead and press Command V or Control V and this will paste everything in here. And then just close the printer settings window. If we were to go back into that now, you'll see that machine G code is highlighted in orange and there is now an orange arrow here. If you click that, it will reset the machine NG code to the default and delete your song from there. This can be useful not just if you're bored of your song, but if you've made errors and accidentally deleted or changed something else in the G code and don't know what it was. Okay, so let's just slice and print this. And as I said, this is just printing a normal print. This isn't running the music G-code file from scratch. It's worth mentioning that currently this is only compatible with bed slinger type printers such as the A1 and the A1 Mini. This is because it requires them to have specifically three axis motors. 
something like an X1C that has additional motors, this software currently isn't set up to divide the notes amongst a larger number of motors, so it's not listed as a compatible model at the moment, but I'm sure in the future it will be. Either way, I hope that this has added an extra fun bow to the maker maestros out there, and if you have liked this video, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons below. If you've made your own MIDI masterpiece, please make sure you leave a comment with a link because I'm sure we would all love to hear it. Either way, until next time, thanks very much guys and happy printing. I'd love to say a huge thank you to my brand new members listed down below, my 3D revolutionaries. Thank you so much, you are making all of this possible. If the rest of you would like to support me and get access to exclusive goodies, including the 3D Revolution Discord community, just hit the join button below and follow the instructions. For now, why not check out some of my other videos, learn something new, or just have some fun. Thanks very much, and until next time, happy printing.